Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. I just had the absolute pleasure of watching season one of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. I watched this with my family. It took us a couple of weeks to get through, but it was an amazing time and I highly recommend it. I'm not even like a big Star Trek fan or anything. I have only seen a couple. I can count on my fingers the number of original series episodes I've seen. I've never seen any of the old movies. I've only seen the J.J. Abrams new ones. So I am I am really not a Star Trekky. I'm not a Trekkie at all. Um, but this one was a prequel to the original series back in the 60s and I was able to appreciate it. I clearly could tell what it was trying to do and it succeeded fantastically at doing that. So you can kind of think of this as a reboot of the original series using modern technology with new actors. But it doesn't feel derivative, it feels like it's paying homage, it knows its target audience, and uh, the most important thing for me is that this series is very mature. This is intended for mature audiences, this is not child's play at all, which I really, really appreciated. So yeah, a huge thumbs up, even as someone who's not like a Trekkie, um, I prefer Star Wars in basically every aspect, but, well not every aspect, but in general I prefer Star Wars, I'm much more into that universe, but this one, clearly Star Trek still has a place, it's glad to see that this media isn't forgotten, this property is not forgotten, and uh, they're still uh, paying justice to the IP to this day, so highly recommend Strange New Worlds. So season one, this is a very easy um, plot synopsis to make, um, because it is essentially 10 or 11 episodes, which are just, um, they're all self-contained. Very little carries over from episode to episode, and that's a good thing. That I don't always like that, but this is an example of how to do that perfectly. And really, that is the Star Trek formula. That's how the original series was, too. Each episode was exploring new life, new planet, new stakes, different stuff they have to accomplish. It's always different. It's never, it's not one overlapsing story. Um, which was honestly kind of an issue in something like Star Trek Discovery, which is another show that I've watched and liked, but I actually ended up dropping it because it just wasn't grabbing my attention long term, uh, during season three in particular. So um, this one is, uh, each episode is entirely self-contained with little bits and pieces that carry over from episode to episode, which is a great thing. So really the, there is no real plot synopsis because every episode is different, but I'll tell you, just in general, you know, we're following a slightly younger uh, Christopher Pike, Captain Christopher Pike, who's the captain of Starfleet's USS Enterprise, which is their prized exploratory vessel, which goes into the deep reaches of space, uh, searching for new life, civilizations. Uh, they always find themselves in battle uh, and having to rely on their wits and each other to uh, solve the problems. So, yeah, love the series. Let's start with the negatives. Are there any? Not really. I would say there are two weak episodes in total. So I, I should have done my homework. I don't know if it's 10 or 11. It's either 10 or 11 episodes total, and two of them are kind of weaker than the rest. They're not terrible, but they're kind of weaker than the rest. So I will point out that the two bad episodes, in air quotes, is uh, the first one is the one where um, Starfleet Based the Enterprise crew, they discover a civilization where they're providing a child sacrifice to protect their crops and prevent natural disasters from happening. That episode to me was very weak because not only was it something I've seen a hundred times before, uh, the whole sacrifice of a virgin, not literally a virgin in this case, but like I've seen that exact sort of sacrificial lamb story many times before, so I already knew exactly how that was going and exactly how it was going to end. Um, and then also the ending is one of the most bleak and stark, con starkly contrasted endings that we've ever had in Star Trek history. It literally just ends on the child being sacrificed and then the Enterprise is like, well, yeah, we can't do anything about it. So unfortunately that child has to die and now we're moving on. It was just very odd. It was super weird tonally and it just wasn't for me that episode. The other bad episode was Unfortunately, one of the ones I watched today, which was the second last episode, this episode is a horror sci-fi experience about seeing the Gorn. Uh, this is the first time I think we've ever seen the Gorn 
in CGI form because in the past the Gorn were kind of these costumed people that would ridiculously flail their arms and stuff. But this is actual like CGI modernly realized versions of Gorn and it's basically Ridley Scott's Alien. Um, it's paying homage to that. It's basically Alien uh, but it's a Star Trek episode. That one, I love it and I hate it. I love it because it's Ridley Scott's Alien and uh, it's a horror episode, but I hate it because it's not, it's the least mature, it's the least insightful, least intelligent, and uh, it's almost like a parody at times, but it's not, it's not enough of a parody to really phone home that message to me. It felt like a little bit serious, even though it basically was a parody. Uh, the reason I say it's a parody is because we get introduced to um, we get introduced to three brand new characters and two of those three characters end up getting killed because obviously they're going to die because we've never seen or heard of them before so what are they doing here? It's just a little bit too, it's a little bit too satirical and parody without actually being like super over the top funny or anything like that. So those two episodes were kind of weak. The rest of them, honestly like 10 out of 10 or very close to 10 out of 10. The rest of these episodes are highly mature. Uh, a lot of intellectual conversation and discourse, the relationships between the uh, the crewmates is super strong. Each of the characters are individually very strong. I basically got attached to every single one of them. Uh, I particularly liked Commander Singh, who is like the security hard-headed lady that had a, a bad upbringing with the Gorn. She has like a vendetta against the Gorn. She is just super badass. I really liked her. I also really liked the Doctor Una. Uh, the reason I liked her so much is because she she's basically an older version of Enid Sinclair from the Wednesday series. Uh, they, they literally look like the same person. I'm shocked that they're not the same person. So that was uh, so uncanny to me. I highly doubt that many people watch both Wednesday and Star Trek Strange New Worlds. So I might be the only person that saw that but they are identical. I'm thinking about, I'm going to make a, I'm actually a moderator for the Wednesday subreddit, so I'm going to immediately make a post after pointing out this lady to the Wednesday community because they're just the same person. But I, other than the Wednesday stuff, she's just a very awesome person on her own. I also really like the romance in this. There's a surprising amount of romance in this series. It's very much for adults. There's I don't know, there might even be a sex scene in this series, I can't remember exactly, but there might be a sex scene, there's a ton of kissing and making out, and people being lustful towards each other in general. It's not expected at all, I didn't expect that for Star Trek, but it's it's working really well here. I also want to point out that this series has a lot of unexpected quirks to it, which is a good thing. So it's, again, originally, conceptually, this one had the risk of just being a modern remake of the original series, end of story. But it's a lot more than that. And it does a lot more than that because it has these weird little quirks in it. Like, for example, one of the episodes is a medieval roleplay episode. The entire episode is literally people roleplaying as medieval, milady, you know, uh, milord and all that. It's literally medieval castles and knights and swords inside the Enterprise. It's an entire episode of people roleplaying as knights and stuff. It sounds crazy, but once you watch it, it all makes sense. Um, so it, it's a pretty quirky series. It's very mature very entertaining, uh, and I was a fan of basically everything about it. I can't really name anything other than those two episodes that I kind of had issues with. I can't name any like major issues. I think the series is super competent, knows exactly what its target audience is, which is basically fans of the original series who are much older now. They're in their 60s now in real life, and uh, but it's still equally as enjoyable for someone like me who's in their 20s and is not familiar with Star Trek at all. So I'm going to give Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 1 a 9 out of 10. I actually think it's that good. It's crazy to say it's that good, but it really is that good. And this series is significantly better than Star Trek Discovery, mostly because this ep this series runs with self-contained episodes. It has a different director for each episode. And um, if you're wondering, the only things that get carried across is um, the one Doctor guy, not Una, but the other Doctor guy, the black guy. He has a daughter who is stuck in stasis, um, and they do something very interesting with her as well, so that was another good episode. That was the medieval episode, actually, that one as well. Um, but, so his, his daughter makes re recurring appearances, and her illness is like a subplot that recurs throughout the series. So that's one of the things that carries over. Another thing that carries over, at the risk of spoiling it for you, but I don't think it's really spoiling it that much, because it's not a huge deal, but, uh... Let's just say that um, the first officer, her her race is very integral and important. 
So there's an episode dedicated to, I think, what was their name? The, not the Elysians, um, maybe the Elysians actually, but she's a part of a genetically modified race. And uh, let's just say that becomes very important. So that's one of the things that will carry over from a past episode to a future one. But otherwise, they're self-contained, fun little bits. If one episode wasn't for you, not a big deal. Jump into the next one and it might be your cup of tea. One of the episodes is literally just a, a rom-com about Spock and his wife-to-be and the awkward sort of Vulcan overly logical mating rituals and stuff. It's fascinating stuff, pun intended. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend this. 9 out of 10.